Dakar and Rally Raid is going into a new era in 2022, and that new era is all about T1 Plus cars. And with me here at ProDrive with the Bahrain Raid Extreme Hunter car is Paul Doe. Paul is the chief designer for the car. Just tell us a little bit about what's different with the 2022 car over the debut car that we saw from ProDrive last year in 2021. Yeah, okay. So one of the big sort of factors in the Dakar last year was the uh, amount of punctures that were seen on the T1 uh, 4x4 cars that were running the 32-inch tyres. Um, there, the sidewalls are kind of about on the... About the bit of a problem in terms of uh, damage absorption from rocks and so on and basically after discussions with Mitchell it was pretty clear that there was no way further they could go with that size of tyre so one of the big steps with T1 Plus is to switch to a 37 inch tyre which is really quite massive. So let's come and have a look at that for a minute shall we let's just see the sheer size of it I mean I'm not the biggest guy in the world I'm not the smallest guy either but that's, it's a that's big, huge. it's a big, it's a big old thing. When you see the car sat on four of these, it looks like a completely different car to to what we had last year. In fact, yeah, they're big, big tyres, um, much heavier actually, which is a, you know, that's a disadvantage. But in reality, the depth of the side or here is what's really making the big difference here. That really gives us a lot more sort of elasticity to uh, absorb the impacts from from rocks and so on. Now you've got bigger tyres that you've just told us about. Does that then need bigger brakes? How does that work? Well, one of the things with this particular size of tyre, the 37 inch tyre, it's actually a 17 inch rim. We had a 16 inch rim before with the smaller tyres. Okay, it's only one inch difference, but actually that's quite a big percentage difference in the sort of packaging volume for brakes and so on. So actually we've gone up from 320 mil discs all the way up to 355 mil discs, which is a big step change in, in the uh, radius that we're working with and the mass of the disc and so on. It wasn't just the tyre size with T1 Plus, it was the uh, wheel travel was another big thing that happened. Uh, so we were limited before to 280 millimetres of wheel travel, which is actually not that significant. That's less than a World Rally car. Uh, whereas now we're up to 350 mil travel, which is, a, which is a really big difference. And coupled with the sort of um, flexibility of the sidewalls makes this car ultra, ultra capable over um, any kind of rough terrain. So um, another factor that's also tied in with it is the width of the car. So um, to package this kind of wheel size, we had to increase the width of the car from 2 metres to 2.3 metres, which is part, again, of the T1. So we're talking about 6 inches each side of the car, uh, wider track, um, so that all the, the suspension arms are longer than last year's car. And basically that's another opportunity for us to sort of relook because we had to do new suspension arms and new uprights and so on and so on to package all of the big brakes. Um, that gave us an opportunity to probably take some learnings to be honest from last year's Dakar where we did have a little bit of damage on on the lower suspension arm so we've managed to sort of take that information put it back through our analysis and come up with uh, new arms that are significantly stronger as w but but not uh, significantly heavier so it's quite a, a big step for us actually um, but the the width of the car is, is quite a big thing so one of those factors actually is that nearly every single body panel has changed um, you would think that you could perhaps get away with a, a smaller change, but I think basically the roof and the doors carry over. Um, but pretty much every single other panel on the car, so the, the hood, the sills, uh, all of the rear quarters, the rear end is all different. And, you know, that actually, that was another opportunity to be honest, because um, obviously the, the last year it was our first ever Dakar car. We've done off-road cars before, but that's, to be honest, it's our first sort of space frame car with, with bodywork like this. And the bodywork was quite good, but actually there was a few things that we saw we thought could have probably done that a little bit better. Um, and it's a really good opportunity to do all the packaging of the bodywork and how it works a lot better. So now the spare wheel access with the hinged doors uh, before we had a removable panel for the spare wheel, whereas now you can see the, the hinge system. Um, it's, it's, it's a completely different kind of system and makes for a, a much easier access to the spare wheels and so on. And just generally the, the fit of the bodywork, the quality of all of that, uh, and the longevity of it is, is significantly improved on this car. Exactly. What about inside the car? What about the packaging for the driver, the co-driver? Has that changed so, in some way? Control. So we've got a completely different uh, aircon system th for this year. Um, and um, basically we've swapped where the air conditioning and, and the, all the engine air intake has, has been. It's kind of swapped around, which is kind of an interesting packaging opportunity. Because at the end of the day, 
that's the back of the engine Indeed. about there. That I is mean, the back of the is... engine, yeah. <laughs> and the exhaust uh, is, is, is under the seat. So you can imagine um, we've done a lot of work on thermal protection throughout the cockpit and so on. We had, we had that b before, obviously, but we've, we've taken it up another level. The silencers actually are new. They're, they're um, a, a bigger silencer and, and um, different, uh, quite a special internal design to try and quieten things down because, you know, the, the crews are in the car for hours obviously you know each day they're in the car for eight hours or something and tr just to try to reduce the fatigue but we increased uh, upward visibility so on the car um last year we had quite a kind of when you sat in the car you sat a long way back from the windscreen i mean one of the sort of features of the kind of sporty style if you like of this chassis is that the it's a very coupe kind of look, very uh, very lent back windscreen compared to some of the sort of perhaps more upright designs of a typical off-roader. Um, and because of that, we have a long windscreen. The crew sat very far back, and in fact, there was um, you know both drivers commented that they could see okay down sort of towards the you know, as they came over a crest and so on. They could see the ground, but actually coming down into a, a off a dune and coming up the other side, where they really need to be able to see their exit point out of those yeah. depressions, is they couldn't see the top of the next dune. So this this windscreen is actually now about I don't know 150 mil. Uh, higher up the car, um, which enables uh, several degrees sort of yeah. uh, further vision towards the top of those dunes. So I think this is what, exactly what a rally raid car should look like. As you, you touched on it yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. you know, the size of the wheels, the stance, the squat, the length, the look, yeah. it's the right color. I, it's a million dollars, it really is. It's just fantastic. And I think it's, uh, it really is the future and a fresh start for the Rally Road World Championship.